Yeah, so let's find out the secret. Let's go. Yeah, sorry about the overly clickbaity thumbnail and intro. But if you've looked at the title of this video, you already know what it's about. And that's a new reverb plugin. Let's have a look at the website. So this is the website of Savant Audio Labs, if that's the way you pronounce it, or Savant Audio Labs. And they only have one product so far, and that is this algorithmic review. And it's inspired by the legendary room simulator algorithm offered here for the first time in plugin format. And the room simulator that they're talking about is from Quantec. And most presets are based on the algorithm from the 1990s version of the hardware, 1997, the Quantec Yardstick 2402. There's also a couple of presets which are coming from the 80s initial simulator, which is the QRS. Now back to the website. And why is this thing so special? Because normally reverb simulators use a technique called ray tracing to simulate all the parameters of a room. But this algorithm takes a different approach by modeling the resonant modes and modal densities of a real room. Now it provides a non-linear dynamic envelope and you can read all the technical mumbo jumbo here yourself. But what is a bit special compared to a lot of other reviews is that the tails are not modulated. Because most reverb simulators actually rely on modulation to avoid a buildup of harsh frequencies in the tail. But this particular algorithm apparently doesn't need that because it provides a very natural tail sound. So let's have a listen because that's really what it's all about of course. And let's first have a listen to a bit of a short reverb. Most examples on the web are on a very large space. And I'm going to demonstrate that on a new track from a band The Wash called Always Yours. And I'm still working on the mix actually. But I've used this plugin in it quite a lot and I'm quite impressed. So I'm going to demonstrate it on this Cajon track, which is an instrument like this. And this is the reverb on that Cajon. So you can see that the reverb time has been set to 0.63 seconds. And it's in the Blend Reverb Effects channel. So let's enable that. I do have a bit of an EQ curve going into the reverb, cutting all the really lows and really high frequencies. And it sounds like this. So let's now compare it to the dry sound and then turn on the reverb again. You can even make that reverb time a bit shorter. So do you notice that when I turn on the reverb, the cajon immediately blends a bit more into the background. And if I turn it off, it's immediately in your face. And that's without the actual reverb being very obvious, especially at 0.5 seconds here. But let's also have a listen at the vocal where I'm using a plate preset. And I have a lot of stuff on that vocal, but I've turned it all off. So only the size reverb has been enabled and that has been set to play delay four here. So let's have a listen. You're my water, I am your land. God, I miss the rain. We survived, but not stayed the same. All memories fade. Yeah, so again, that's a very nice plate on the vocal. And actually, this is the exact same algorithm, but just set up with some different parameters so that it has the characteristics of a plate, but really it's a room simulation still. Because if you look at all these presets that they have over here, basically all the presets 0, 1 until 17 are the exact same algorithm, but just with some different settings for the delay time, the density, bandwidth, etc. It's only when you go to the 1982 presets, which simulate the initial device from Quantec, that they have two other algorithms from that device, the 10.5 cubic meter algorithm and the 10.6 cubic meter algorithm. And this is also the 10.6 cubic meter algorithm. Apparently these were very famous presets from that first room emulator the Quanta QRS, and they've put those in just for fun. But all of the other presets are from the one algorithm from the Yardstick 2402. Now let's try to set this up on a guitar track. So this is basically the opening preset of the device with all parameters set to the default value. And with the RT60 main, which is the main reverb time, you can set basically how long of reverb you would like.
Then next you can limit the bandwidth. By default it is set to full bandwidth, but you can also limit that to, for example, 8K. And you can further use the RT60 high control to limit the high end even more if you need that. but I actually like it with full bandwidth. And in the same way, you could also set the reverb time for the lows slightly different. And this is a multiplication factor. So this is whatever you've set the main to and then multiplied by the factor over here. Next up, you can vary the density mode and density mode 25% is also the default of the hardware apparently. And this is the recommended density setting for natural modal density simulation of the room. But you can set it lower to simulate more sparse open reverbs and higher density settings result in thicker, more complex reverbs. When I look at the density value, when you select, for example, a plate preset, the density is actually set to zero. So apparently plate reverbs are much less dense and more sparse than real rooms. Now those are really the main controls. Reverb level set to zero when you use it on the send. Direct level set to off when you use it on the send. Now it also seems that you have the ability to control the level of the first reflection separately with this button over here and to introduce delays for the direct signal and for the first reflections and for the reverb, which works a bit like a pre-delay according to the manual, but the actual room simulation also already has a natural pre-delay. So they warn in the manual that these controls might respond in a different way than you're used to from regular algorithmic reverb. Now before I go on, if you like videos like this, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm so that it can spread to more people, subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon if you want to know when I post another video. I also have lots of affiliate links in the description to these stores, please use them if you intend to buy anything at these stores to support the channel as well. Now my conclusion, well as you may have gathered from the comments that I gave, I like it a lot. I think it's a very nice reverb. A lot of the examples on the web are of very very long reverb times, so I also gave you some examples of shorter reverb times, and I think it works very well for that as well. It's also a new developer on the reverb front, which I'm also very sympathetic to, especially if they're talented and can produce a plugin with a sound like this. I'm all for. Now you do have to realize that this plugin version is 1.0.0 at the moment, which means that it's a very early version. For example, if you buy the plugin or get a trial version, you just get sent a download link for the VST3 file that you need to put in your own VST3 directory. There's no installer or anything like that. And there are a couple of bugs, most notably in selecting presets, but there's a long thread on the Gearspace forum where the developer is very present and also gives all kinds of practical hints and tips on how to use the plugin. And he promised in there that he would solve those initial bugs quite quickly. They probably have already been solved by the time you see this video. Another thing is that it takes quite a bit of performance, probably around 4-5% on my CPU, but that seems to be just the nature of this algorithm which does a lot of parallel processing. And there are some suggestions in the quick start manual that you get on purchase on how to limit that performance, because based on how you set the parameters, the performance can go up and down. But then again, I don't need 20 instances of this plugin on the mix. So, so far I think it's well worth it. So if you want to be at the forefront of this evolution, Check it out. There's a trial version, which you can use forever, but it just stops working after 45 seconds for a couple of seconds, and then it starts working again. Now, currently the introductory price is 74 euros, but I'm not sure that will still be available when this video is released. Otherwise it will be 99 euros. There's no AAX version yet for the Pro Tools users. So currently it's only VST3. Now, if you're really into reverbs and I am, then check out my other video on vocal reverbs. Have a look, enjoy, and see you soon.